Hey, how we doing? So, welcome to Pedals and Stuff. Today, going to have a little look at the Relay G10S by Line 6, their digital wireless system. Quite entry level, uh, around £200 for the transmitter and receiver, or maybe 130 140 for just the uh, receiver by itself if you already have a transmitter, which I did because I bought the original uh, G10 which was their base unit here, which was kind of, they kind of sold it as a like a studio wireless, which is actually quite handy because if you've got that sat on the side and you don't need to, every time I wheel my chair back and forth, I end up going over cables and stuff and it's really annoying. Um, so it was quite a handy little unit. However, totally let down by its micro USB power socket, which just is, ridiculous. Um, there's been loads of stuff online about the unreliability of these sockets uh, in this unit. Uh, they just break, which basically leaves you with a rather expensive paperweight, which is what that now has become. So when they announced the G10S, which was more of their gigging, touring kind of uh, version of the unit, I was interested straight away because like I said, although the jack socket on that, uh, the power socket let it down, it was a quite a cool little unit with decent sound quality. Um, so this one does have the dedicated nine volt in center negative. So you can use that with your standard power supply. Works with one spot if you've got one, by the way, even ones that basic are perfectly fine. Um, I've used one on my pedal board and it works perfectly fine with that. Um, still got your micro USB in, then it's also got a cable tone switch. So you can switch that over to emulate a 10 foot and 30 foot cable. Um, you've got your DI out, XLR styly, and you've got your instrument out there, uh, normal instrument cable. All right, cool. So on the front here, you can see a couple of things really, just the channel selection switch there, which is really useful. Generally, you just leave it on auto and it'll just choose the strongest signal for you. Um, but say there's a few of you in the band and you know, you're know you all using these units, then you can actually dedicate a channel to each guitarist, bassist, whatever the instrument is. So that's quite a handy feature as well. Um, you just push your transmitter in there to charge it on the bass. I'll just plug that in uh, and then you will see here that it's charging as the LEDs just move upwards. Um, when you're transporting it around on your pedal board or in your bag or whatever, you just pop that out a little bit, the transmitter, and you won't lose battery charge because it won't just be on all the time as you can see it is at the moment. So you just pop it out like that and it's nice and secure in there and then you can travel around with it without, without worrying about your battery running flat. So yeah, well thought out quite a cool unit. 24-bit um, audio, decent quality, metal chassis, so nice and rugged. Um, I think it's 100 and 130, 140 feet range, line of sight range, which is huge for this little unit. I can't imagine you'd want anything bigger than that unless you are very lucky to be playing stadiums and running around like a lunatic. So yeah, a really cool little unit. Um, let's have a look at how it sounds. Kind of compare it to uh, a, a normal 10 foot cable and then also just see if the cable tone here switch really does make any difference to our sound and if it's worth trying to use it. Obviously up to you because it's going to make a little difference. Probably I think it's going to roll off some of the highs. Um, but you know, we've all got different ears and different perception on good tone. Question is, is it really going to make any difference anyway? All right, let's have a listen. Okay, so when you plug it in, you'll get a little green light there showing it's hooked up to the receiver and everything is working well. By the way, the only issue I've ever had with the transmitter and the G10 system is when I've used a piezo equipped guitar and then it's just not worked at all. But I've used it with uh, loads of other guitars and never had a problem with it. Uh, but feel free to comment. Maybe you found that with an active pickup it's not worked so well or it's worked fine. I don't know. I don't have any active equipped guitars. so. I can't comment on that. However, 
sounds pretty good to me. Right, let's have a little look at the cable tone options. So at the moment it's off. Set to the middle there, that's 10 feet. Thirty feet. Off. Right, let's try that on a clean sound. Right, ten feet. Thirty feet. And off. Thirty feet. Off again. Bridge pickup brighter. Let's see if it's uh, any more noticeable. Seems a little bit duller to me. Uh, what do you think? Is it something you think you'd use? I'm not sure I would. If I wanted it to be, uh, if I wanted a less bright sound. I think I'd have probably already EQ'd that in on my amp or just use tone roll off on my guitar. I don't think I need to actually go over and switch my unit for a preference. I think we all dial our sounds in how we like them in the first place. So maybe a nice little feature, not one I think I'll use personally. All right, so more interestingly, let's just check out the quality of sound of the guitar um, through the G10S or just with a cable. What I am going to do though, because I have a 10 foot cable, is set to try and make a fair comparison, set the cable tone emulation to 10 feet and let's just see how that goes. Okay with the cable, it's a clear tone 10 foot cable, quite a good cable. If you don't know uh, clear tone, look them up. Inexpensive, Decent cables available in the UK, worth checking out. Right, I think I think that's all I need to do. Um, 
yeah, a great rugged little system that will fit on the pedal board, which is fantastic because it just means you've got less to think about, less to carry around. And such progress from, you know, the big kind of wire rack units that we have to use, we used to use before. Um, you don't have to worry too much about interference. Um, I've never had a dropout with one. I've not tried it to the 130, 140 odd foot max range, but I have gigged with them and I've never had a dropout or an issue in any way or any interference at all with this digital unit. So yeah, pretty cool, pretty cheap and does what it says on the box and that's all we can ask for. So yeah, awesome. Check them out. Line 6 G10S. Don't buy the G10. Even if you just use it in the studio, it won't last you six months because the power socket is not good at all. So yeah, stick with the G10S and I don't think you can go wrong. Awesome. Thank you very much. Thanks for watching. See you soon.